Hey you guys, it's Cassie, Dust to Roses. Welcome back to my channel. This morning uh, we are starting on the Christmas Make a Junk Journal with Me series and I am so excited you guys. I have been looking forward to this for a few months now um, and so uh, this is a collaborative project between Sharika, Postal Love, and I and um, so we've been planning this entire collection, as I mentioned in my previous videos, uh, since probably spring 2021. And so it's just really, really exciting to see it all coming together. And um, and this, this Make a Junk, Junk Journal With Me series was something that I was extremely passionate about. And she was definitely on board, so she helped me curate these packs for you guys. Um, but if you have missed the video where I went through kind of the supplies list if you want to craft along with me. I've linked that below in the description box of this video. Um, you can also grab a free digital kit uh, if you check out that video. So be sure and check that out. Uh, again, it's linked below in the description box of the video. But for now, we're going to get started. I'm not going to go through supplies list again except for what you will need for this video. It's a no-sew journal, so you'll need a hardcover book, uh, and this one has already been gutted. If you did get one of our uh, journal kits, you will have received a hardcover book cover. Um, some of them still have the spine attached, some of them don't. Either way is fine. I am going to actually be removing the spine. Uh, I chose this cover because I really like how um, like the way the, the cloth was laid over the book board. Um, so I just chose to use this one. Uh, I'll be showing you guys a few options on like how to embellish the cover. I'm actually going to make like a kind of flip front cover, um, using a vintage label. You can use a vintage postcard, uh, anyway, I'm getting kind of lost in the woods. I've got a billion ideas, uh, but, but yeah, uh, so a hard book cover with or without the spine, I'll be showing you guys how to remove the spine. Um, and I'll be showing you guys how to make kind of a soft cover or a soft spine, um, like traveler's notebook style journal. Um, and obviously we're going to end up with kind of a passport size journal in this book cover size. So be mindful that that the eyelets where we will be attaching our journal signatures will actually come in about a quarter of an inch. Um, so you're going to lose basically a quarter inch of dimension on the top and bottom, um, roughly. Now, obviously, if you're using elastic, uh, you'll have some give and you can actually make your signatures whatever size you want because the elastic will, will stretch. Uh, I will most likely be using either a lace or a twine to bind. Um, so, so yeah, just be mindful of that. We will get into that in more detail as we get further along in the series. I just wanted to kind of give you guys a heads up so that when you're picking your journal cover, you can be mindful of that. Uh, and then of course you'll need some textiles. You'll also need either scissors or utility knife to cut the spine if you need to do that. Uh, and then scissors obviously to cut your fabric. Uh, and then some glue of your choice. I'm using Aileen's Tacky Glue just because it's very inexpensive. It's high tech and, um, and it works really well for this project. Uh, I've made several journals in this style with that exact glue. <clears throat> okay, so let's get started. Uh, I am just going to cut the rest of the spine out. Um, and I'm just going to use scissors because my spine is at, or my book cover is actually very thin. Uh, so it won't take a lot of effort really to, to, um, remove the rest of it. Uh, I like to hang on to the spines of my book covers <clears throat> because I think that they make really cool like skinny tags or 
like to add a tab later on into your journal, um, you can use this for a lot, a lot of different things. And they are often extremely like distressed just because they're old. <laughs> um, and they just add like a lot of kind of natural vintage texture. Um, depending on how intact your, I'm just going to lay those there. I don't want to bang them on my desk too much because I know that is actually kind of annoying sometimes. Because of the binding style that we're doing, um, we'll actually be mounting the fabric inside the spine. So I'm trying to get like kind of a neat edge on the edge of uh, the book cover, but I'm not worrying too much about like snipping off all of the, all of the fabric and spine material. Like that's not a goal, I guess, um, because it, uh, it's not going to cause the spine to have any weird bubbles or, um, buckles in it in any way. I want to make a single signature journal. So it's going to be very simple. Um, <clears throat> but I do want to have maybe approximately an inch and a half wide spine and that will allow a lot of room for the journal to grow as we start adding textiles and embellishments and things into pockets and um, and then we can also add a pocket to the inside of the cover or a flip out or anything like that. Um, having a wider spine obviously is going to allow the journal to grow more. Um, so, and also it will allow some of the fabric or more of the fabric to show uh, on the spine. So now I just want to decide which of my fabrics I want to use. And I recommend using one of your heavier fabrics uh, because that's gonna add more structure to the spine and allow the journal to have, um, like to withstand more weight. So again, when your journal starts growing, obviously the signature is gonna be kind of heavy and start to pull on the spine a bit. Um, so having a heavier weight fabric as the base for your spine will help to account for some of that added weight. Um, so I think I wanna use this white fabric. <clears throat> and I've actually left my example journal uh, at home. Um, so for those of you guys who don't know, uh, I do have a workspace that's kind of outside the home now. And I kind of take projects back and forth with me. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and I ended up leaving my example journal, which is my uh, my heart of Thanksgiving journal at home um, because I was working in it. So basically we are just going to like kind of eyeball it. Um, again, I never really measure anything. <laughs> if that drives you nuts, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but that's just kind of my style and how I choose to work. Um, so I'm just going to eyeball it uh, basically, <clears throat> we want the spine, we want about an inch to an inch and a half of fabric on the inside of our covers from where the spine ends. So if our spine is about this wide, then we want another inch on either side. Uh, and this doesn't have to be exact. Um, you will be covering this later on. So just kind of snip out a piece. And uh, as long as the spine, as long as your covers are attached to where the spine has even spacing, it will be fine. that out of the way. Sorry if the sun is getting bright. Um, it was a little overcast this morning, so I opened the shade and now it's starting to come out, uh, which is fine. I, 
I would prefer it to be sunny. This fabric has kind of a uh, design to it. Um, so it's, it's like from a vintage tablecloth actually. Um, but it does have snags and spots and stains, uh, just because it, I mean, it is vintage. So, so yeah. Okay. So basically all we're going to do is add some glue to, well, first of all, if, if your end pages or the inside of your cover is loose, you'll want to kind of remove that. Um, and I usually just tear it down until it won't tear off anymore easily. And that just kind of creates like this more solid surface. Uh, because again, we're going to cover the inside. And so we want this to be something that is going to hold after we glue it on. Um, so go ahead and do that to both sides, the front and back, back cover. This actually has some old wrapping paper on it. <laughs> and if it's not loose, I would say just don't worry about it too much. Um, yeah, all of these book covers that came in our kits were uh, vintage or antique French book covers. And I mean, they were all different sizes and shapes not really shapes I guess they're all rectangular but um but yeah different sizes and conditions that's what I was trying to say conditions um so I always just add my glue to about the first inch or so generously And again, you can use any type of glue you'd like. This is kind of my preference of glue for this type of project. Um, you can also choose to kind of smooth it with your pinky. <laughs> I recommend the pinky. You can use uh, obviously a, a brush if you want. Um, I've always kind of just been the get your hands messy kind of girl. So I just use my pinky. And then just place it down. And then do the same thing with the front. Um, a note about if you have a directional book cover uh, and a directional fabric. The mine is not directional, so I did not worry too much about it. Or the the cover is, but the fabric is not. Um, but if you are matching a directional book cover and a directional fabric, make sure the orientation is correct at this point. Um, because obviously if you place your book cover upside down, then your, <laughs> your spine is going to be upside down or your cover is going to be upside down. Um, and, and yeah, so, I mean, obviously the benefit of working with like an aliens or other type of wet glue that dries slower is that you can adjust if, if you need to. I think that's pretty good. Okay. So yeah, see, it's very, very, very flimsy right now. Um, so now when we flip the cover over, you can actually go in and add some more glue just right along the edge. Again, we're going to cover all of this. So 
it does not have to be perfect or neat or clean. The point is we want everything to be stuck down very, very well. So yeah, I've got quite a bit of fabric on this side to glue. So yeah, I hope you guys are all doing really well. Um, hopefully better than we have been. Uh, I think this is day 19 of this current illness. Like it's been going back and forth and um, Lennon has had like an ear infection and now it's a, I guess, antibiotic resistant one. And so it's been just a really hard time <laughs> recently. And uh, yeah, anyway, so I hope you guys are all doing really well and um, staying healthy and safe out there. I, yeah, I had all the plans to do this much earlier on, but. So I'm just trimming up the edge there a little bit. The next step, now obviously, uh, just a note, you can layer fabrics. So let's say I wanted to add in a piece of lace or um, like one of these stripes or something like that. Uh, you could obviously do two different types of fabric and the process would be the same. You know, just glue the cover to both pieces of fabric or stack them. Um, so do one and then the next one. Uh, so I did not do that because I'm going to actually create kind of a bottom patch, patch, <laughs> uh, bottom and top patch where I'll actually attach my eyelets. So that's going to reinforce and make the top joining points a lot stronger. Um, and you can do a combination of all three. So, uh, so yeah. <clears throat> um, but I do think that I'm going to use some of this stripey fabric to do the top and bottom. Um, so let's get some of these scraps out of the way. I basically want maybe like an inch on the top and bottom <laughs> and I want it to be folded over uh, so evenly on the top and the bottom um, an inch on the outside and the inside so we need to cut a strip of fabric that's basically about two inches wide uh, and I am just going to hand tear mine and I don't know why this fabric uh, I mean, it's a vintage Cranston print, um, but for whatever reason, it is crooked. <laughs> uh, like, I guess originally it came off the bolt crooked, maybe, or anyway, um, but it's fine. I just, you know, deal with it. So, yeah, um... If you want measurements, I cut mine to about two and a half inches by four and three quarters. Um, and again, like just eyeballing it. And then obviously you can save whatever is left over from this offcut, the two 
two and a half inch offcut that we made to make tabs or use in a pocket or you know whatever whatever you need to use it for or even a slow stitching project later <clears throat> okay so now we're just going to glue this part on um, and a tip place place the piece of fabric that you're going to attach just right below where you're gluing so this is going to kind of give you a guide for where to place the glue. Again, not being, being a little bit more careful because this is obviously the cover or the outside of the cover. Um, but I mean, the glue does wipe up pretty easily. I'm just going to kind of smear it around with my finger. So I'm going to glue on the top part and the bottom part. And then you can take kind of a bone folder kind of crease in on the spine and smooth a bit. And then do the same thing on the top. And just kind of eyeballing I had originally planned to do this as like a record the whole series and then do voiceovers. Um, but I feel like I actually forget to say things when I do voiceovers. Or, you know, it, it's just easier to explain as, as I'm working. So hopefully you guys are okay with that. <laughs> um, but I would like to know in the comments if you have a preference um, obviously not for this series but for future videos do you prefer voiceover or the live chatting and me fumbling for words at times okay <coughs> so now all we have to do is I just kind of fold the fabric up so that I get an idea of where the glue belongs. And this really only matters for in the actual spine section because again, we're gonna cover up the front and the back covers inside. Um, so that doesn't really have to be perfect. We do just wanna make sure everything is glued down very well. just reminds me of being a kid and like using you know finger painting and stuff like that so now no it doesn't look great <laughs> I promise it will <laughs> So we are ready to um, do the inside like lining of the cover. Uh, if you got one of my kits, you did get a piece of vintage textured wallpaper that is large enough to uh, do the front and the back cover. 
Um, and so all we're going to do is, so basically all I'm doing here is filling for the edge of the book cover and I'm roughly lining my wallpaper up with that edge and then I'm just going to make a tiny little mark on the paper just pick the straightest side uh, and make two marks so make one here and one here and then use this straight side as your starting point and cut with with a uh, like a paper trimmer to create kind of the straight edge on both sides um, and that's just a really good tip all around if you are struggling with like a piece of fabric or paper not being square but I think ultimately after we trim up the bottom edge, it will be pretty square. Yeah, that's fairly good. So all you would do is just glue that in. I might trim just a tiny bit off right here. Just my scissors. I just love this paper. Um, at this point, you can choose to ink or not. Um, I'm not going to ink. It's not typically my style. My piece actually has a little tiny hole in it. Um, which is fine. I mean, we're probably going to add a pocket or something. So just feeling for the edge of my book cover, which is right here. And I just want to mark just inside that line. And then the same thing on the other side. And then we will just use that straight top edge. to trim. your original first piece to make sure that the two covers have the same size or the same height. I don't know, that's just kind of a thing for me. your paper is damaged like mine is um, so it has a little spot there and then it has a little tear just be mindful of which uh, like where you're placing those imperfections and if if you'll be covering them later so I plan to create kind of a like a tuck spot or a pocket on the front cover and so I want to make sure those imperfect areas are going to be covered. <clears throat> but again, I mean, it's just part of the life of this, uh, this paper in particular. So, I mean, you can choose to celebrate that and let it show or to cover it. Okay. Now, just add some glue. And 
I'm just kind of burnishing that down. Because my paper is textured, I'm not going to use a bone folder. Um, but I am just pressing really well with my hands. So yeah, see how like finishing off the inside covers just really helps to bring it all together and um, create kind of a more polished look. So that's it. Uh, we will be adding the eyelets and the um, the added cover details on a future video, but that is the base cover for our Traveler's Notebook hardcover journal. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me for part one. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope you've had some inspiration. Uh, I'd love to see what you've made again. If you are in, on Instagram and are making along with me, check out the hashtag below uh, and share your progress. Um, until next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and happy crafting.